Yaskawa. <laughs> this video shows how to create the axis variables used by all PLC Open function blocks. Here's a quick preview of everything I'll show in this video. In the initialize POU, hit the F5 key to name the variable with axis ref data type and usage var global in the user variable group. Type dot and choose the axis num structure element, finishing the command with colon equals uint pound and the logical axis number, ending the line with semicolon. The variable can now be used anywhere an axis is required. Let's go through it now in more detail. The PLC open motion control blocks all have connections for the axis variable. The axis variable must have the axis ref data type. Axis ref is a structure that is individually defined by each manufacturer who implements PLC open. The idea is that through one variable, all axis specific information such as max speed, encoder resolution, user units, and whatever other data the manufacturer requires can be referenced by the PLC open function blocks through this variable. The MPIEC controllers, however, have this type of access data saved in the hardware configuration. So there's no need to redefine all these details in the access variable structure. Yaskawa's implementation of the axis ref structure has one single element, axis num, meaning the logical axis number. This number points to all other axis specific information already residing in the controller. In this project, the linear ball screw actuator is logical axis number one, and logical axis two is a rotary table. Also, the LIO01 card has an external encoder as logical axis 21. For the three axes, I'll make three axis variables and load the logical axis number into the axis num element of those structures. We recommend defining the axis variables inside the initialize program POU. Initialize uses the structured text language, so use the F5 key or right click insert variable. I'll name the variable for this first axis as screw. Under data type, choose axis ref. Usage is var global, so that this variable can be used anywhere in the project. I'll organize the variable under the user variable group and click OK. Type dot and the structure element appears. Notice the data type of the axis num element is uint, unsigned integer. Use the mouse or down arrow to select it and hit enter. To load an unsigned integer 1 for axis 1 into the structure element, uh, use the syntax colon equals uint pound 1 for logical axis 1. Every line must end with a semicolon. Now I can repeat this process for the rotary table. F5, rotary, axis ref, global, user variable, OK. Dot, axis num, colon equals uint pound two, semicolon. And I'll repeat for the external encoder. F5, external encoder, axis ref, global, user variable, OK. Dot, axis num, colon equals uint pound 21, semicolon. Now to get this to run in the controller, first use the make button. And after successful make, use online project control to bring up the resource window. This window is slightly different between the MP2600 IEC and MP2300 IEC controllers. For the MP2600 IEC, just click download. For the MP2300 IEC controllers, click download and then again download. More details are explained in the program data transfer video, part of the IEC 61131-3 basics curriculum. Then turn on debug mode. The program is not running. Check that the stop switch is not on and then click cold start. But notice the values are zero. Why is this? Well, you can see in the task list that initialize runs in the start task. 
I'll turn off debug mode and right click for the settings of this task, which shows that it will run at warm start, not cold start. Warm start is the equivalent of power on. I did cold start, which is the equivalent of a first time machine startup. I'll stop and warm start. Now in debug, you see the values loaded. As a bit of troubleshooting, when you make the project, if there are any errors, go to the errors tab and double click the error to find the offending line. I'll demonstrate the most common mistakes. Number one is typing the word unit instead of uint for unsigned integer. Number two is missing the semicolon. And number three is only typing the variable name instead of using F5 to declare the variable. I can highlight and declare this as a variable here after the fact. You can see that the solution is to find these errors, fix them, and keep making the project until you have zero errors. Thanks for watching this video, and remember yaskawa.com IEC for application notes, videos, firmware updates, and more.